It's royalty is about service. You are a servant when you are a king. You are a servant when you are a queen. It is a prodigiously heavy crown that you must precariously balance to serve the people well with wisdom, discretion, and at times well-placed and well-utilized aggression. Marvino got me cooler than Bocino and De Niro put together. My real life is like casino. They should pay me for some Biro taking G-strokes through the ghetto. We're rap, the fire's just a necessary evil. Greetings. For those of you who may not know, <laughs> those who truly know me know that I have a very healthy appreciation for gangster cinema. In fact, my freshman year at Sarah Lawrence College, which is an Ivy League liberal arts school with a very heavy emphasis on writing. So just to get accepted, uh, you had to write a 20 page paper, um, thesis paper, just to get accepted. Um, <laughs> and for your first year freshman thesis, um, you have to write you know, your own case study. So I wrote a 39 page thesis paper on gangster cinema, the history of gangster cinema um, as a film studies major or concentration because they don't call them majors at Sarah Lawrence because they're so different. <laughs> but um, as a film studies concentration, I did my thesis on the effects of the history of gangster cinema on American society in general and hip hop in particular. Um, so this is going back to the 1920s gangsters films with Humphrey Bogart and James Cagney. I ended up writing this thesis paper and I actually sent my thesis to Jay-Z who read it. I sent it to Jay-Z's publicist because of the 39 pages, there were about 12 pages dedicated to him and his musical catalog and the very brilliant way that he has interwoven um, allusions to gangster films, again, from the 1920s to the modern day films such as Scarface and The Godfather, and his lyrical references to real life mafia men and mobsters, such as Lucky Luciano, whom he calls himself an iceberg slim, real life gangster figures that he emulates and embodies. I sent the paper to his publicist and Jana Fleischman, what's up? <laughs> and um, she let him read it. She emailed me back and said, um, Mr. Carter, really appreciate your work. He really loves the paper. Next thing I know, um, that was early 2007, um, he came out with an album, a concept album called American Gangster later that year based on the film American Gangster with Denzel Washington that also came out in 2007. And on the track, track 13, which is Fallen featuring Bilal, uh, he says a line, fight and you'll never survive, run and you'll never escape, so fall from grace. And this was a play on basically two sentences that I had written in my thesis paper, but <coughs> you know, uh, that's just my little, you know, album writing credits. So I say all that to say that as a daughter who grew up without my physical, biological father, my understanding of masculinity and my appreciation for masculinity came largely from film. Um, and I was emboldened and empowered at times in my life when I needed to be by the gangster archetypes of masculinity. Um, there was a time in my life where I felt I couldn't afford my femininity. It was too, too vulnerable. And also um, having been targeted by pedophiles and predators from a young age due to being very mature intellectually for my age um, and physically my body being overdeveloped at the time. I began to masculinize myself as a defense mechanism. Um, this was an interesting <laughs> amalgamation of punk rock, goth aesthetic and attitude with this obsession to understand and, and to some degree embody the masculinity that I admired from gangster cinema and mafia films. 
And I came to realize very quickly that the masculinity that I appreciated in the gangster film genre was, in a sense, its own form of royalty. The mafia, many do not understand that every ethnic group has a mafia. They have a Chinese mafia, Japanese, they even have a Jewish mafia, a Russian mob, um, the Mexican cartels, uh, every ethnic group, right? But what's, what's even more interesting sociologically is that in these groups of what would seem to be marginalized uh, ethnic communities in the United States, where unique identities had to be formed in this melting pot of what America is, that's what's so beautiful and unique about America and about American cinema and gangster cinema within American cinema. Um, these communities, in these communities, the mafia men were their kings, their princes, their lords, their governors, their satrapies, their viceroys. <laughs> um, and also from an early age, I was always very well informed and fascinated by royalty, royal hierarchies. Um, royalty is not just beauty and luxury and power in the sense of I get what I want. Royalty is about service. You are a servant when you are a king. You are a servant when you are a queen. You are serving your empire when you are an emperor or empress. Because to whom much is given, much is required. It is a prodigiously heavy crown that you must precariously balance as royalty to serve the people well with wisdom and discretion and at times well-placed and well-utilized aggression. Hierarchy is not about someone being superior or better. In fact, it is the one who seems to be superior that is actually the servant, that is actually making the sacrifice for the other. Even celebrities in our society are a form of royalty. They sacrifice their privacy, their autonomy, their anonymity, their identity to be worshipped and to serve. <laughs> in inspiring people and giving them an identity. And yes, they serve agendas for the elite powers that be. The mafia men were essentially kings of their communities. They protected. Um, they weren't just drug lords. Um, they weren't just, I mean, real godfathers. There's a difference between the godfather, such as a Don Corleone, and a Scarface, what I like to call the king versus the kingpin. So Don Corleone was merciful, he was gracious, he was prudent, he was wise, he was discerning, and he lamented his responsibility. He didn't lord it over people. He was indeed a lord. A lord is one who protects, who saves, who delivers. And what's also interesting is, you know, we call God our lord. But you also have, especially in Elizabethan Shakespearean English, you have this idea of wives calling their husbands Lord. And even in the Bible, you know, they call God Lord, you know, but they call authority figures Lord. Anyone in a position of authority that is in a position to protect and serve another is a Lord. Yet there's a difference between being a Lord and embodying Lordship and lording your power, as in your ego, over others. There are nuances to the idea of this type of, of power. There's a power in the discretion with which a true king utilizes his strengths, again, to serve humbly, rather than someone who is power mad and power hungry, who uses it to feed their wounded ego. Oh, I got all the money. You gotta bow down to me. You know, so there's a difference between Scarface and Don Corleone. Don Corleone was a family man. And this also, uh, just going on a tangent here, slightly digressing, if you're familiar with the Orisha tradition, this is, this is a, a problem that I have with many people in the New World who misconstrue and misrepresent 
the Arisha Shango. So many people in the new world, just as they over-sexualize Oshun, which we'll go into that another time, um, they over-sexualize Shango. Oh, he's a womanizer. He's a ladies' man. Oh, he's so sexy. He's so powerful. No, he's a king. He's a family man. His joy, in fact, is his family. He embodies that true African sense of a king whose joy is in raising good children, raising up a good nation, seeing his nation flourish, not just having money and power and influence to get a bunch of women. So when we think of a king, we think of someone who cares for family and community and nation and the protection and preservation of the integrity of his culture. That's a king. Um, so, you know, in exploring gangster film, I was able to explore these archetypes along the spectrum of masculinity in a very unique way and was able to learn lessons of masculinity where, in a sense, those men on film were proverbially my fathers teaching me about the mind of men, their intelligence, their shrewdness, their strategy, the ways of war, how to play chess, not checkers. Shout out Denzel Washington <laughs> in training day. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to share that as a prelude to another Instagram Live that I'm planning sometime next week. I can't make any promises. I have to be very flexible and fluid with my schedule with three little ones at home. But I plan on doing another um, Instagram Live, part of the series of The Hunter and the Divine Masculine, going into pimp prostitute dynamics. And this very idea, you know, I'll elucidate further on this very idea of the king versus the kingpin and how that manifests in relationship dynamics. So stay tuned. Blessings.